Kimberly Michelle Pate, born March 4, 1982. Today's feature is the story of persevering and clawing your way through an industry built to devour most talented artists. Talent is one thing K. Michelle discovered she had an abundance since a child, playing multiple instruments, and of course developing her ability as a singer. But not just music, Michelle was drawn to acting as well because it suited her personality and gave her the opportunity to express herself and all the energy she had she didn't want pent up inside. This all led to her pursuing a music career, taking music lessons from trained professionals that led to her achieving a scholarship to Florida A&M for music. Academically, K. Michelle was an honor roll student throughout, juggling that and her dreams of becoming an entertainer until she graduated from the university with honors and a chance to attend law school. Of course, that was put on hold so she could fully give her all to the music and hopefully secure a record deal and navigate the music world successfully. What I like most about K. Michelle is no matter how you feel about her singing, the presentation of her as an artist, or the defiant attitude she had on full display over her time on Love & Hip Hop, she always attempted to perfect her craft and she came from a place of deep passion and it shines through in her music and her story. I'd compare it down the same lines as Keisha Cole before her and Mary J. Blige before them both. You love their music because they incorporate an emotional depth not many artists can go find within themselves and then are able to display it to the audience in a way it effectively connects to those same emotions. An artist like this, you'd expect to go far because you understand the value they have naturally over other artists. But when it comes to the music business and the entertainment industry, much has to go right in order for that talent to reach the masses. Any artist that makes it through and finds success, I have tons of respect for because I understand the road there is one of the most difficult in the world. K. Michelle dealt with her fair share of difficulty and unsurety about where her career was headed and the typical trappings of new artists in the game, itching to get that first project out and establish themselves as a viable artist in the game that can hold a fan base's attention. Things didn't initially go her way, specifically with her record label and the circumstances they chose as a business, leaving K. Michelle in the dark until she had to find a creative way to finally be seen and heard. She had an interesting lane, last occupied by Keisha Cole she could thrive in, but for these reasons, her growth was stunted. Salute to everyone that's requested K. Michelle. Many of you wanted to see this feature, so here you go. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music. I should get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. K. Michelle is a singer, actor, songwriter, and TV personality from Memphis, Tennessee that grew up with music as her influence. Like mentioned, she learned at an early age to play the piano and the guitar teaming it with her singing and belief in herself that she could do music as a career. But school came first and she made sure she was top of her class using singing to help pay for university. She'd get pregnant while at school and left for a while to have her son whose father left her and went on to marry her sorority sister, a betrayal in love and friendship she never thought she'd experience that also helped give her the chip on her shoulder to make such deep and relatable music. She returned to finish school again at the top of her class with law school offers on the table but a music career was calling and she answered. She links with producer and A&R for Jive Records Memf Hits and the two began a relationship that led to her signing to Jive Records in 2008 releasing her debut single, Fakin' It, featuring Missy Elliott. Stun number one, label issues early on. If you didn't know by now, in the music business, the leading determining factor in whether or not an artist has success largely falls on if they sign a record deal or not and how that relationship with the record label goes moving forward. 
After signing, K. Michelle hit the studio and delivered on the music she was supposed to for the album, like Fallen, I Just Can't Do This, How Many Times, Self Made featuring Trina, and a remix with Gucci Mane. But for whatever reason, the label didn't feel the singles were enough to move forward and years would go by with Michelle's album Pain Medicine sitting on the shelves. Later, she would inform her fans that Jive as a label didn't understand who she was, what to do with her as an artist, and admitted that at the time, she may not have known who she was as well. Three years in total would go by with K. Michelle signed to Jive and nothing happening. She released a freestyle called Medley, which she asked Jive what they were waiting for to release her music to no avail or response from the label. She also had a few bars from Mev Hits, who she claims wasn't helping her make viable hit records. Later, they'd have their own issues and accusations of domestic abuse. In 2011 though, something unexpected occurred. Jive, Arista, and J Records merged into RCA Records and all its artists were displaced to different labels, making Pain Medicine a fixture on the shelves never to be released. Besides the obvious reasons, this was a growth stunt for Michelle because it took so many important young years away from her. We all know that appearance and youthful energy is important in things like music and even sports entertainment. For a female, it's even more important because those early 20s years are prime for you in natural ways. Also, you're that much more relatable to the youth audience that controls things like influence and streaming. Missing those youthful years stuck on a label makes it difficult to come back around as an older artist that still hasn't released a project. It didn't stop her but held her back for a while. In years, an unreleased art created she'll never get back. Stun number two, enough hits. Another reason K. Michelle didn't become as big a star as she expected was because she wasn't putting out the hit records it takes to stand out in the ultra-competitive world of entertainment. At the end of the day, labels will smile with you, treat you good or bad, release and promote your art, do what's needed to place you in untapped markets to gain more fans, spend money on things you need to go and connect with those fans, and everything else in between. But what they won't do is let you do all that without bringing back a return on investment substantial enough to justify them valuing you as an artist. It's a business and there are bottom lines. The main bottom line is that Kay Michelle, while she was or is a reality TV star, the hits didn't come along with it, enough for her to be promoted like she believes she deserves. Her highest charting song was her debut single, VSOP, that peaked at 89 on the Billboard 200. It was the first song she released after coming into fame from Love & Hip Hop and was heavily supported in the urban community. By this time, she was now signed to Atlantic Records, who approached her after her time on Love & Hip Hop. Her follow-up single, Can't Raise a Man, also cracked the top 100 at 94, but actually went gold the only goal single of her career. Both singles led to her debut studio album Rebellious Soul in 2013 that sold 220,000 in total, missing the goal mark by a substantial amount. In the clearest indication of separation from big artists to a middle of the pack artist, these sales and charts showed that K. Michelle was popular at the time, enough to bring some eyes and airs in the urban market but not enough to cross over into a top-tier artist. Stun number three, gift and a curse. Lastly, let's talk about Love & Hip Hop. A show like Love & Hip Hop was actually a gift and a curse for K. Michelle in that it helped her recover her career after Jive dropped the ball, then dismembered, and gave her another opportunity on Atlantic to be valued. That value actually came because of her time on the reality show. K. Michelle was one of the show's standout personalities and she gained many fans because of that show. She was the hottest she'd ever be in hindsight. She was a star on a hit TV show and Atlantic couldn't wait to roll her out. She did okay as far as placement with her first three albums landing inside the top 10 
on Billboard's Top 200, even though sales-wise they underperformed. In my opinion, the reason they may have not reached their potential is because of the stigma of that show. As a person that doesn't watch the show, from the outside looking in, it always seemed like a show older artists go on when their careers die off and they need promotion. I never knew K. Michelle was actually a newer artist using the platform for promotion, which she did successfully. But I don't think there's a long line waiting to support an artist after they're seen on Love & Hip Hop. Maybe because they're presumed old news or washed up, or because that audience only cares about the drama thirst quench they get from watching it, but as a platform, it's hard seeing an artist being able to become a superstar from it. It gave her the spark she needed, but not the support in pushing her music to the level many expected. All in all, K. Michelle musically is talented and she does have passion for music. She seems a hard worker and a hustler and I respect that. Her music is great and she does all she can do to help it reach as many as possible, but for these reasons, her growth musically was stunning. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music, and I'm out.